Now let's look at the stress in this body, and I'll use principal stress as a major measure of the stress situation. Actually, the principal stresses uh, correspond with the sigma x and sigma y stresses, uh, the appropriate ones, at the top and the side of the hole where the stress concentrations are highest. So uh, you could also, at that point, interpret these as sigma x and sigma y. Um, I'll show these stresses as they came from the different codes at the location where they are provided. For instance, the mark stresses are given at every node and even the mid-side nodes, and those are in red. And they are averaged for the user at the uh, common node to two elements. The MSC Nastran um, nodal stresses can be averaged if the user uh, makes a special request, but the default is to give it separately uh, from the projection from the Gauss points within each element out to the node in question. So you get two values projected from each of the two elements. Now that happened to work out well at this node. The Astro stresses were given at the centroid of the element, and they're given in blue, and so you can see they fill in the interior regions here of our simple model. So the stresses seem um, somewhat consistent. We've got pretty good agreement here for the maximum principal stress. I've also included the uh, minimum principal stress here in which there's a little bit of difference on the uh, compression that's obtained at that stress concentration for compression. After doing the three academic solutions that we've just finished, I decided that I should also include a commercial quality solution. So that was done in this case with MSC Nastran, and uh, uh, this was done by Michael Aldred at the University of Michigan with 200 quad-8 elements and 1,280 degrees of freedom. We tried to emphasize the mesh in the two critical areas, as you can see. Our commercial study used MSC Nastran with Patran as a post-processor. Here I show a figure of maximum principal stress, which of course emphasizes the tensile stress regions in the body. And we pick up the hot spot at the top of the hole. Now the tabular stress that is found as the extreme was 391 megapascals, but this Patran plot shows a maximum of 376. So it softened that extreme value somewhat by some type of averaging in the plotting process. I guess the the uh, moral of that story is that if you want extreme values, you may want to look up the tabulated values in your output and uh, not completely depend on these graphical representations. Nevertheless, this is a rather pretty plot. I've set it up um, using the stress regions shown on the right that are clearly delineated here. There's also a way in Patran to make a smooth transition between the colors so that they gradually blend one into another. Uh, it's done with the command set comma x fringe comma on. And when you do that, you get this kind of a figure. Now the numbers are pretty much the same on the uh, color spectrum on the right. Uh, and the figure looks similar, but, but it is different. And I asked one of our practicing engineers uh, about this because I thought at first, well, this ought to be an easier way to interpret the results because it's prettier, you know. It looks nice and you get warm, fuzzy feelings. But he said, no, actually, it's actually easier to interpret the results with the previous approach with, with X fringe off. Now let's look at the minimum principal stress using our commercial solution. And here we have pointed out the maximum compressive regions over here. And notice that the number goes down as minus as 164 megapascals. Now the tabular value there was literally 176. So again, the color uh, picture here has softened the extreme value a bit by some sort of averaging. As a grand finale now, I'd like to compare tabular results for stresses and displacement for the three simple academic runs and then the one commercial run. Here I show the 
maximum principal stresses that have been obtained in the simple academic problems. And notice that they're quite a bit short here of the uh, what we might think of as a more exact value of 391 megapascals. There is a, a handbook value available also, not for a, a doubly finite sheet, but rather one that's infinite in the horizontal direction and finite in the vertical. And that number in Popov came out to be something like 3.23 uh, from memory. And so it's the fact that this body is finite in both directions that leads to such a high stress concentration factor, closer to four really than three. And so this exceeds by quite a bit the rule of thumb that uh, uh, drilling a hole in a body will, in, a, in the uniaxial stress field, will raise the stress by a factor of three. Now, the minimum principal stress is uh, likewise much more severe than uh, you would have expected from the rule of thumb because the rule of thumb is that the stress concentration is a factor of 1. Here we have 1.76. So there's quite a hefty compression involved in this uh, problem. The displacements are um, converged rather better, and we expect that in the displacement method of finite elements. So even though these top three solutions were very, very um, coarse in the mesh, they got answers that were within 10% on displacement. The, um, let's see, Mark would have been the stiffest of the element models and would have given only eight parts out of 116 was something like 7% off, even though we only used two elements. So these codes have all actually performed very well on displacement and rather marginally on stress when you make this course um, a mesh. I'd like to 